Well, good morning. Holy smokes. I was so caught up, I walked up here without a microphone the first time, so. How about this, this nice little piece? Yeah? yeah? I think we're officially preachers now. <laughs> oh, man, aren't you glad that Jesus is alive? Amen. Um, we're going we're gonna to keep changing it up a tiny bit. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, I feel real strongly that the Lord is just saying, go a different direction. And sometimes following Jesus is uncomfortable, right? Um, but the beautiful thing is that in the midst of our discomfort, he is perfectly comfortable. He is the Holy Spirit, the comforter. Before I share too much, uh, I want to make one announcement really fast. Um, on May 7th, that is next Sunday, uh, we're going to have an incredible guest speaker here for both services. His name is Jason Vallotton. Uh, but then that night, uh, the evening of May 7th, we are having a men's night in this room with Jason Vallotton. And here's the thing, guys. I, 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 I'm believing and praying that one, you would sign up, but two, that you would sign up because I believe that God is actually going to shift a ton of things. I was talking to Jason and not to let the cat out of the bag too much, but I said, what is it that you wanna share with men right now? And he said, honestly, I feel like the Lord is talking to me a lot about um, talking to men through the idea that God actually wants to give them a new name. He said, because shame will tell you who you are if you listen long enough. Or it will lie to you about who you are. He said, guilt will actually convince you of something other than God has said over you. And he said, you, look, you can look in scripture and there's so many instances where God actually stepped in and changed a man's name. And the moment that his name was changed, he actually started living on a different trajectory for his life. I don't know about you, but I've been in a lot of seasons and I feel like I'm in a season right now where I'd like for my name to get changed a little bit. As your pastor, can I just be honest? I've been in a really, really hard, challenging, sucky season. Yes, I'm sorry I said that word if that offended you. But it's just the realness of the season. And I need God to actually speak on my behalf. And if you've been in a situation or you are in a situation, or if you've ever been held down improperly, pressed down by guilt, shame, fear, or any sort of control, I would love for you to just pull your phone out right now. Register for this, scan the QR code. It's $35 a man. Uh, we're gonna have uh, an incredible barbecue dinner, but I would love for you to get out of your comfort zone and get amongst a bunch of guys that actually need the same thing that you need. It's gonna be an amazing night. So I'm gonna leave this up here for a couple of moments. It's gonna be back up uh, at the very end of the service, and I'm gonna give you just a couple of seconds just to scan this code and sign up. Ready, set, go. Perfect. Cool. Wives, I know it's Mother's Day, but do yourself a favor. Send your man to this night. He'll come back different. That'll be the best Mother's Day you ever had. Amen. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go uh, a little bit different direction. Uh, I feel like the Lord was, was telling me to, to scrap what I was going to, to share and, uh, and go this way. So would you pray just for two seconds with me? Uh, Father, I ask that in the next 22 minutes that you would unravel us. I pray that you would just send us into a place of being undone so that we might see the significance of what you're calling us to. That we would lay aside the weights and the cares and the sins that have slowed us down and that we would actually step into a moment with you where we have ears to hear. I, just, I declare that ears are here. Ears are ready to hear, that eyes are open, that we might actually hear something that shifts us, changes us, challenges us. We accept your challenge. We say yes to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have a Bible, you can turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. I'm gonna read out of the New King, I mean, sorry, the NIV. This is what it said. This is the parable of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in their jars along with their lamps. 
The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy, and they fell asleep. Verse 6, at midnight a cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Such a heavy set of scriptures, and I'm just gonna kind of, you're just gonna have to bear with me. I, I, I'm just gonna talk out of my heart for a little bit. Um, the anointing of God is vital. The power of God on your life is vital. It is the the agent of change, it is the fuel, it is the DNA, it is the power, it is the character and the nature of God rubbed into you so that you have what it takes to actually live life as a follower of Jesus. The anointing is vital. You say, well, how, how, how does this work? How does the anointing come? The anointing comes in the, in the secret place. The anointing, you're anointed by God when you draw near to him and he draws near to you. And this word anoint, it means to smear or to rub in. And here's the picture that I want you to see. I want you to see yourself every time that you intentionally, not on accident. This isn't like the kind of intimacy that you have with God when you didn't study for a test and you prayed that one prayer before you crossed the threshold into English class. I'm talking about carved out intentional. I'm setting this moment and this appointment up with you, Lord, on purpose. And in that place, as the scripture talks about in Matthew chapter six, he talks about when you pray, don't be like the heathen for they love to stand on the street corners and in the synagogues and they, they love to preach so that they would be heard by many. And he says, nevertheless, I tell you, they have their reward. The reward is, is that you were heard by men and man can give you no significant reward that lasts. You could live and die by the praises of men all of your days or you could live by one man and his voice only and that is Jesus. And in this secret carved out intimate moment with God, you say, Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm here, I've made this place for you. I am doing a scripture said, I am drawing near to you. And in this one moment he comes and he begins to rub off who he is onto you. You ever walked into a, a, a moment with the Lord? Maybe it's a worship moment. Maybe it's just a quiet time moment. Maybe you're feeling a lot of anxiety and a lot of pain. This happened to me this morning. I have been, as I mentioned, like just in a challenging season, questioning, do I have what it takes? Every man in the room, the deep down burning desire of your heart is to know that you have what it takes. Do I have what it takes to lead a family? Do I have what it takes to, to, to excel at my job? Do I have what it takes to be a man in this world? Do I have what it takes to actually win that woman over that I have my eyes on? Do I have what it takes to actually be a husband once I have her? We all have this desire to know, do I actually have the thing that it takes? And that's where I've been wrestling. That's where I've been for a little while and I was in the shower this morning and I just honestly, I was just beat up. 
And it was as if the Lord was like, for how long will you allow yourself to align with something that I haven't said over your life? I'm just being real with you. I'm, I'm talking to you as, as a pastor who is dealing with his own struggles. We're not perfect. And if you ever find a pastor that tells you that he is or acts like he is, you should probably run. Because he's building his kingdom and not God's. And in the midst of weakness, the word says, his strength is made perfect. And so I found myself in this place and then all of a sudden it was as if I, I snapped out of it and like the Lord slapped me or something. You know, like one of the, the backhand kind that you, that you feel. And I just began to boldly prophesy over myself. I just began to boldly claim in faith the thing that I didn't feel and didn't see. Because that's what faith is. It calls those things that are not as though they were. It starts shifting and changing what it aligns with. It starts saying things, and when you release things in prayer, everything starts shifting. Because when you speak in faith, you're actually speaking with and alike the same voice that Jesus speaks over your life. All of a sudden in this moment, what's happening is the Lord begins to rub more of who he is into me. Before you know it, without even thinking, I'm saying things that the Father would say about me. And every time you step into these moments, you're actually allowing yourself to be smeared and rubbed in with oil. You are being anointed in these moments. And once you rub oil into your skin or lotion into your skin, you can't separate that. And so to believe the lie that in the presence of God there was fullness of joy, but outside of the presence you have been removed from God, it's not true because it can't happen. Because he has rubbed part of who he is into you, like oil, and you can't separate the two. So the next time that the enemy comes knocking on your door saying what you felt was there, but now you're here and God is not with you, it's just a lie. Can I tell you that the enemy has one card and he's been playing it over and over and over again? There's nothing new in his arsenal. It's the same card and it's the last ditch effort card. And unfortunately, sometimes we actually believe that it actually is powerful and it works. In this set of scriptures, it talks about how these five foolish virgins, these, these 10 virgins, but these five foolish, they all had lamps. And, and, and the lamp is literally your life, the wick, of that lamp would be your spirit. It would be your inner man. And oil, oil is this result of intimacy with the Holy Spirit like I'm talking about, but oil is that thing that keeps your lamp burning. The five foolish, it says that they brought their lamps, but they didn't bring any oil. They knew actually what was going to happen. They knew that the bridegroom was coming. We're hearing it over and over and over. We're getting closer and closer. Jesus might come at any moment at any time, although that no one actually knows, but we know that, that we're getting closer. We're closer today than we were yesterday. And like these five foolish, they knew he was coming. They brought their lamps, but they didn't bring any oil. In other words, they didn't take him seriously. The wise, however, took oil in their jars with their lamp. We have to get into this place where we're constantly gathering oil. Where we're constantly getting before God with the purpose of getting oil. There's that story in the Old Testament with the widow who lost her husband and Elisha comes and he says, gather as many jars as you can. And he begins to fill these, and he tells her, pour the oil out of your jar into these other containers. And for as long as she had containers, the oil never ran out. But at one point, the jars stopped coming and the oil stopped flowing. These five wise virgins, they, 
they knew what it meant to continue to go back to the source of oil. Meaning, they found time. They didn't say they didn't have it. They found time. They carved out time to continue to gather oil. And it comes from intimacy with the Father. I wonder what your time's like. I wonder what my time's like. I wonder if I don't have enough time or I don't make enough time. Can I be real honest? The answer is I don't make enough time. Can I be honest with you? You don't make enough time. But he's coming. That's not going to ever change. It's a promise. Do I n not make enough time because I don't believe him or do I not make enough time because I think that I'll get by with what I have? See, because yesterday's anointing is not enough for today. And the oil that you got yesterday might have burnt out last night. Oh, I know he's coming, I got my lamp. Here's my lamp. It's burning on fumes. And then it says that these wise virgins, they brought their lamps and they brought jars of oil. And the unwise, their, their, their lamps, they go out. No more, no more oil. The thing about these lamps is interesting. The wick within itself doesn't burn. It's the oil that's burning around the wick. And then there's this moment where the oil goes out, runs out, and now the fire is actually on the wick. And there's a moment in time where the, the lamp will cease to work because it has no more wick, because it is spiritually dead. If the wick represents your spirit, there's this moment where you have completely run out of the source of life and now you're dependent upon you. And my spirit without Jesus is not enough. I will be as these were. He came, the wise ones went in, and then all of a sudden there's a knock on the door. Let us in. We went to go get it because we realized that you're finally here. The other thing about all this is that they go to the wise and the wise and no, 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 you can't have ours. The oil's not shareable. Your intimate moment with the Lord where you are anointed, it doesn't work for your husband too. Oh, I'll just ride the wave of somebody else you're gonna be sad. <laughs> I know that's really, really cut and dry, but it is just true. You are designed for a connection with the Father, personally. And Jesus did so much on the cross for you that he made every single one of us, be it the, the worst of the worst, Paul said, Oh my gosh, I love this. He says, it is for the grace of God that I am what I am. He's talking about, man, I was the worst of all the apostles because of the way that I treated the church. I was the worst of the worst because of the way that I persecuted Christians. But, I love that, because of the grace of God, because of all that Jesus is, is doing and did on the cross for us, I am what I am. I stand in a place of right standing with the Father. We have to continue to be these people that just continue to gather oil because the day is actually coming. And I just wonder if you think you'll make it based on what you got. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> I'm hearing the same things you're hearing, okay? This is not me beating up on you. This is me beating up on us. <laughs> this is at midnight, a cry came. Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. 
I mean, there's this, there's this perfect way that they could trim their wicks where the flame would burn evenly and it would burn controlled. And it would give off the most light without flickering, without a wavering, without a, a going out. And we've got to get into this place where we allow the Lord to trim us. We, can, we can't run from the correction of the Father because the whom the Lord loves, he corrects. We have to get so found in our identity in Christ that when God says, hey, you need to change this because this behavior that you're doing over and over, it's not going to work out, then you actually say, yes, sir. Jesus is your friend, but first he is your Lord. And we have lost the art in some ways of allowing Jesus to tell us what to do. He is both. And we gotta find ourselves hidden enough where he can trim on you and he can trim on me and he can prune the branches. He even says, in the book of John, he talks about how every branch that bears fruit, he still trims them. Why? Because he loves us. Because he's got more fruit, better, bigger. He wants you to burn in a way that you've never burned before, but you have to allow him to trim you in some ways. He's coming. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Here's the interesting thing about, uh, about this. <clears throat> the word know in this isn't a word that has the never attached to it. And there's that one scripture that talks about how in the last days, there will be many that will say, do we not do this in your name and this in your name and all these great things in your name. You say, I'm gonna say, depart from me, I never knew you. That's a difference than this usage of the word. This usage is a usage that means at one point in time, we were close. And then you neglected me and you began to gather oil from different places. There was a moment when you were hot after me. Jeremiah chapter two talks about when, when God is sharing and, he's, and he's, he's crushed and he's hurt by the children of Israel. And he says this, he says, I remember you when you went after me in the wilderness. When you went after me in a place that was not sown. In other words, I remember you when you needed me the most and you were in the middle of the worst situation, the worst season of your whole life. And he says this, what offense have your fathers found in me that you would draw yourself far from me? And he goes to dissect all of these things that they've begun to do. They found favor, they got the promised, they got the thing that, that they actually wanted and the thing that they needed. And then they put him aside and they came to the other side and they began to live from the place of now I have the promise, I don't need the one who made the promise. And it hurt his heart, crushed him. This happens in our relationship over and over and over and it happened with these five foolish. There was a moment when they knew him and there was a moment when he knew them. He tells them, tell you the truth, I don't know you. I want to be known by the Father. Jesus made it so available. Jesus made the Father so available to us. I'm not talking about works here. I'm not talking about doing the right things, checking the right boxes, reading the amount of scriptures, praying the amount of time, laying hands on enough people. I'm not saying all of the boxes have to be checked for you to be known by God. That is a law-based thought process. 
And grace says, actually, I've made a way for you to have bold access to the throne room of grace. That is intimacy where I rub off on you and I'm smearing myself into you. I have, I have made a way through Jesus for you to actually get right in the middle of my business so that when you leave, you walk out smelling, acting, talking, and looking more like the Father than ever before. And all you get to do is believe that Jesus was all that he said that he was, and then he did all the things that he said he was going to do so that you actually have the availability to go right into the throne room of grace. That is the works part, just believe. And like you do with your wife or like you do with anyone else that, well, let me rephrase that, like you should only do with your wife or your husband, if you're trying to be romantic, if it's not your husband or your wife, don't be. Amen. <laughs> now you prepare a place. You turn the lights down or off. You do things on purpose, why? Because they mean something. Because you're designed to love them as Jesus loved the church. And he's asking you, the only thing that I desire of you is for you to carve out time specifically for me so that I would fill you and your jars that when I come, you will be burning in such a way that you get the full invitation in. I just desire for you to gather oil. The Father desires for you to just continue to gather oil. Find the moments, make the moments, carve out the time, get alone with Him. Don't let it be on Sunday. It is not enough for you. It is good. But he said, give us this day our daily bread, not our Sunday bread, not our weekly bread, not our once every month or twice a month bread. Some of us are walking around looking like we ain't ate in weeks because we haven't. This is the bread of life. It's Jesus. He said, I am the word. In the beginning, he was with the Father. He is the word. Would we feast on him and be prepared for that one moment when he actually does come? And we are not the ones that are going to fight to try to figure out how to get oil then because we've been gathering it all these years. Can't share it. Go get it yourself. Amen? I know it's a completely different direction, but I just want to encourage you. You have been designed for connection and be foolish for you to not continue to daily basis just connect with the Father over and over and over again. Amen? Thank you so much for watching today. If you need prayer or would like more information, please reach out to us on our website at renewlifechurch.com or find us on social media. Also, if you're in the area, we would love for you to join us in person at one of our two campuses in Midland or Lubbock, Texas. Have a great week and we hope to see you soon.